Trade has been an important part of commerce since the beginning of time. From trading your brother a Snickers for a Kit Kat or as large scale as America and Iraq's business with oil, trade is an important aspect in all civilizations. One of the most famous and influential networks of trade is the Silk Road. This road, or should we say roads, were a web of tiny routes all leading to large markets. These pathways had families, merchants, peasants, and even important leaders. This massive trade highway stretched from Europe to Eastern Asia. Some items traded can fall under the category of fruits and vegetables, nuts, animals, metals, wool items, cloth items, luxury goods, drugs, food items, spices, and most importantly, silk. The main way for transport on the Silk Road was horses and forms of wagons. All the civilizations gained more knowledge and advancements thanks to the Silk Road. In order for the road to run smoothly, other countries had to lack certain items. For example, Arabia is known for being extremely dry and barren, nearly impossible to grow any sort of fruit or vegetable. Rome played a key role in growth of their population, and once they began trading along the Silk Road, Arabia gained more nutrients from important foods such as spinach, artichoke, eggplant, oranges, lemons, limes, and melons. Other countries that traded fruits and vegetables included the Mediterranean and Persia. The green dots on the map represent fruits and vegetables, and as you can see from the wall, it is a very crucial part of the Silk Road. Nuts were a, a valuable part of the Silk Road, mainly due to the fact that they were a key part of the diet of the people on the Silk Road. Some nuts traded along the road included pistachios, walnuts, and sesame seeds. Persia and Europe were the only two civilizations to export these goods, but they were exported to nearly every civilization along the Silk Road. Nuts are not shown on the map, however they are an important part of the Silk Road. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, the Silk Road was full of animals, but not those. In fact, Europe's main export was an animal, the horse. Other animals on this list range from arena animals to cattle and even domesticated as pets. Countries that export animals include Europe and Rome. The trading of animals released a lot of pressure on farmers. These animals served as beasts of burden and made cultivation and transportation easier and therefore add more to the list of trade goods. More work equals more food. Animals are not shown on the maps due to low number of animal trades. The majority of the things you use are made of metal or wood. The chairs you're sitting in, the computer you're watching this video on, and even your jewelry are all made of metal. This only begins to prove the grand importance of metal in every civilization. Nearly every civilization exported and imported some form of metal, with the only exception being Arabia. The most commonly traded metal includes glass, iron, silver, and gold. These metals le lead to innovations like the water wheel or the compass. The black dots represent metals, woods, or glass. Surprisingly, the only civilization to not have documented metal imports are Africa and India. When in war, you never want to give your opponent an advantage, right? Wrong. At least that was the case while trading on the Silk Road. War items are a common item traded in marketplaces among merchants. These items were swords, gunpowder, and other weapons. Gunpowder was first invented in China in 1080. It first spread to Europe in 1200 or 1300 AD, but that has, not, that has yet to be verified. Although there weren't any maps of this, it was still a vital part of the Silk Road. Nonetheless, it spread to other civilizations, aiding in advancements in technology, but also advancements in warfare. Countries that distributed these items include China, Europe, and Persia. If you look at the tag of your shirt, you'll notice that it, it'll say the material it was made of, whether that be polyester, wool, cotton, or cashmere. You may also observe it says the country it was imported from. During the time of the Silk Road, clothing didn't come with these tags, but they were still traded. Some cloth items traded along the road included wool fabrics, textiles, tapestries, fur, and carpets. Every civilization, except Africa, traded and imported cloth textiles. Cotton and wool were the most popular styles in this time period. There was something for everybody on the Silk Road, luxury goods included. Luxury goods are a large category, but nonetheless important. Some that fall under this category include paper, slaves, jewelry, and aromatics. Many places like China, India, and Africa profited largely from the trade of luxury goods. In fact, Africa's most popular trade item was ivory due to their large amount of elephants roaming the land. Luxury items were imported to every civilization, including India. The purple dots represent luxury goods. We chose this color because purple is regarded as royalty due to the great expense of finding purple dyes, which was also traded on the road.
Fruits and vegetables weren't the only foods traded on the road. Other foods like grain, fish, coffee, and rice were traded heavily. This added to the civilization's food supply similar to the fruits and vegetables. However, grain was easier to grow and obtain, so the trade of grain was cheap and easy compared to other foods. Civilizations that traded food items included Rome, Europe, Arabia, and China. They were also traded to nearly half of all civilizations on the Silk Road. The yellow dots represent food items. Although these items don't get the visual appearance as being important as fruits and veggies, they were. Without these types of food, people would quickly become malnourished due to lack of carbohydrates and protein. A more surprising item was traded on the Silk Road, this being drugs. Don't get us wrong, these drugs weren't all bad. Items that fall under this category include opium, herbs, and medicines. Not many countries exported or imported these items, but the ones that did include China and India. Due to the fact that there wasn't much drug activity along the Silk Road, there is no representation on the map, although it was still an influential in the advancement of medicine like herbal remedies. Arguably yet another food item. Not only did this item add zest or heat to food, but it also advanced many economies. What is this item, you may ask? Spices. Some important spices traded along the Silk Road included granulated sugar, salt, pepper, and cinnamon. Some civilizations that exported spice include India, China, Arabia, and the Mediterranean. The pink part of the map represents spices on the Silk Road. Spice was a huge part of many cultures, so once the trade networks expanded, so did cultures to other civilizations. Finally, the most important of all trade items, silk. This item was the main export of China and gave the road its famous name. China wasn't the only civilization to export this item. India and Arabia also learned the difficult art of silk making. This luxury was spread to nearly every civilization along the Silk Road. The gray dots mentioned on the map represent silk. It is the thickest because of its massive importance on the world and on China. It was so important to China because of the patience and quality of the silk they made. No other country could create such a delicate and beautiful piece of fabric like this civilization. To conclude, the Silk Road was the most important part of all these civilizations. If it weren't for the growth in economy, population, innovation, spirituality, and cultural experiences on the Silk Road, the civilizations wouldn't be the way we know them today. It also created jobs, which therefore boosted the economy significantly. Every civilization had a main export. China, silk, India, spice, Arabia, carpet, Europe, horses, Mediterranean, olives, and olive oil, Rome's silver, Africa, ivory, and finally Persia with swords. We owe a lot of gratitude towards this road. The road contributed to the de development of many institutions of international trade, distribution of labor, international banking, protection of property, and the rights of consumers we see today.